we want to praise the Father in heaven for these new revelations. You know, give him all credit because it's like these verses are becoming new. And I want to talk about what I believe are or is the most important chapter in scripture right now for this time period, not of all times. Okay. Now, what chapter do you think I'm going to say? Mm, for this period of time? Yeah, just for dreams and ages. Um, something in the Third Testament? I don't know. Okay. That would be a good guess, man. There's some important chapters in there. You're probably thinking probably chapter 17. Huh? Chapter 17 is a very good chapter. Uh, chap time. Yeah, 16. I can't recall what the title of that. That was on the, on the law. Okay. Remember, I was talking about the importance of the law. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Malachi chapter 4, and that ain't it either. We're going to none of these volumes of books or books that we've talked about. The book we're actually going to go to is Enoch. Okay. Now, the first chapter I'm going to take you to is chapter 2, which has only one verse in it. Mm -hmm. Now, you're thinking that that could possibly be the most important chapter of all of the book. And it, some would argue that it is. Because this chapter here, even though it only has one verse in it, is actually quoted word for word in the Bible. Okay. Did you know that? You knew that. We talked about this before. They didn't know it. And since they didn't know it, let's come over here and let's look in the New Testament. For one of the shortest books in the New Testament, Jude, the book that comes before um, Revelation. And you see that whole chapter Enoch quoted in this book. Oh, okay. I don't know exactly which one. Right there, verse 14. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 14. Okay, this is verse 14, Jude 1. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord come with ten thousand of his saints. Okay, read the next verse. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have got ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. It's like my um, brother Bronze. You know how you say in the song, you are uh, standing strong right now and saying anything you want right now. What's the next? Is that the end of that verse? Yes. What's the next verse? Sixteen says, "These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts." And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Anyway, let's go back. Enoch too. So this is what Joel was saying now. He said Enoch referred to it. So basically a direct quote. If you go to the Septuagint translations, um, they line up almost perfectly. Behold, he comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon them and destroy the wicked and remove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and ungodly have done and committed against him. Almost word for word, right? Mm -hmm. Now, some would argue that that's the most important chapter in the book. I would not. Um, I think they would because it makes a connection that Enoch is legitimate, mm -hmm. right? It takes away all the confusion, right. you know? But I think the most important chapter is uh, the previous chapter. 
Uh, chapter 1. You yes. would read this. The word of the blessings of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous, who were to exit in the time of trouble, rejecting all the wicked and ungodly. Hold on. We're going to have to back up. Did he say exit or did he say exist? Exist. So already he's saying this right here is to us. You see this? Yeah. The people that who are to exist in this time. So this was, even though this was the first book written, it was written for us. Mm -hmm. As if most people wouldn't even notice a book exists until now. Right. The word of the blessings of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the wicked and ungodly Enoch, a righteous man who was with God, answered and spoke while his eyes were open, and while he saw a holy vision in the heavens, this the angels showed him. The word of the blessing of Enoch. And we know that Enoch walked with God. It says, how he blessed the elect, and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble. So this book is written specifically for this very small, what they call them, the chosen few. The ones who are in this time of trouble, who are both elect and righteous is who he's talking to. He's talking to the elect and righteous, which is basically um, the two people on the ark. The one four four and those that are around around the one four four. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe you're right. You you more right then, yeah, yeah. I believe you got it. That's the hundred forty four thousand and the multitude that no man can number. So he's written this for these two groups of people only. Now that's what we're understanding here, and not for all time because he says who were to exist in the time of trouble, and this is the time of trouble. So. The time of trouble, you know, well, we won't talk about how long it could go back because you can go way back. Um, rejecting all the wicked and ungodly. So he's still talking to the elect and righteous, but they, and these elect and righteous are rejecting all the wicked and un ungodly. So that makes this group even smaller then. Because not just because you're 144, just because you're righteous, don't mean that you're rejecting the ungodly. You could just be living with it. Mm -hmm. Just not partaking, just not abstaining from it of your own. Like, I don't, like the person, you know, in the house say, I don't do that. You know, they do that. I don't do that. Well, you know, that ain't rejecting it. That's living with it. Mm -hmm. So this group is getting even smaller. Enoch, a righteous man, See, and this is the problem with the book of Enoch is he, he doesn't have any periods. They took all their periods out. Yeah, see, I was noticing that they were all running together. Ungodly Enoch. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. See, there was two Enochs in the Bible. And okay. by checking that out, you can actually right. see, act like you're talking about the ungodly Enoch. And people that came in the comment section and asked questions like that. Why are y'all listening to this dude over here, King son? <laughs> because it said, yeah, so they took the periods out. Right. It's time to put the periods back. All right, so when you read this time, put the period back. Enoch 1 and 1. The word of the blessings of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the wicked and ungodly. Enoch. A righteous man who was with God answered and spoke while his eyes were open and while he saw a holy vision in the heavens. This the angel showed me. So he, his eyes were open, meaning that, you know, and like I say, he's seeing into the heavens. So he, like the book of Genesis said, he walked with God. He walked right. with the Elohim. He walked with the angels. He knew stuff in this book. You know, he, he taught some stuff in his book too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how we and started, you know, this video because we was about to talk about the calendar. Mm -hmm. Celestial calendar, how all the way down in chapter 71, when he started talking about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we decided to come back and show the front of the book and the first verse, and wow. That's, that's where we're at now. Right. 
So what do you think? The most important chapter in, in all of the Bible? In all of the Bible? All of Scripture. Yeah, yeah. I said for this time period. Now, oh, okay. Because my mind, like, my mind well, going back to John 1 and 1. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. The elect already know that. The word of the blessings of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were ex to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the wicked and ungodly. These are the only people going to going to heaven. Anybody else ain't on this list that he just talked about? They ain't going to heaven. They ain't going. They going. They going. They going to the other heaven. They going to the <laughs> conventional heaven, where grandmas and puppies go. So you're you're saying that they're not gonna eventually. They come in, no, we talking about the there. people that's going across the water alive now. Oh, Remember okay. The Bible okay. says you have to stay alive. Yeah, those who are yet alive. The yeah. Mm -hmm. to the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, the new knowers. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the only people that's going to be alive, going to get on the other side of the floodwaters. Okay. So these are their instructions. What does he say he's doing to bless them? What what what, what is he blessing us with knowledge. Yeah. The book of Enoch is for the people who intend to go over. Oh, absolutely. It's necessary. So like when you were talking about the calendar. If you don't understand the calendar. You, um, it, yes. you may get to see it, but you're not going to last. You're not going to stay there because you're going to be doing the key on the wrong day. You're not going to be keeping the Sabbath day on the right day. The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me, and from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation but for a remote one, which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them, The Holy Great One will come forth from His dwelling, and the Eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and appear from His camp, and appear in the strength of His might from the heaven of heavens, and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth, and the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and all shall melt like wax before the flame, and the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. But with the righteous he will make peace, and will protect the elect, and mercy shall be upon them, and they shall all belong to God, and they shall all be prospered, and they shall all be blessed, and he will help them all, and light shall appear unto them, and he will make peace with them. Yeah, chapter 1. Because it is a dedication, dedication dedicated to the people, to us. Um, I agree. Um, I think once you know this, and for those who don't know it, you know, there's always, I guess, do they have time to become one of those elect and righteous? Yeah, we, so. we're actually waking up now. So everybody is like, we're all coming into our an existence of who we are. And we're all given a choice. You know, we're going to be shameful, you know, and start lying and trying to weave our way out of it. And, you know, going in the corner high. Or are we going to be remorseful? That's what he means by the nation will remorse because now we actually understand the state that we're in and we're going to want to make corrections to get back on our righteous and, and or elect state. So. Mm -hmm. Well, with that, um, I guess we're in it by saying shalom. Shalom. Peace and safety into your home. <laughs>